Hey, I'm Stephanie Cohen. I'm the medical director at San Francisco City Clinic, the municipal STD clinic here in San Francisco. And I'm Oliver Bacon, and I'm an HIV doctor at San Francisco General Hospital, and I worked with Stephanie on PrEP here at City Clinic. Oliver, I have some questions for you about PrEP that, that often come up. Um, one is, what, um, what HIV tests do you generally like to get when you're initiating someone on PrEP? So it's a great question. Um, there are a lot of different right answers. Um, I think it's important to keep the bottom line in perspective, which is that what you really want to avoid doing is giving PrEP to someone who has HIV infection. So whatever testing strategy you choose, you really want to do all that you can to avoid that situation. So what the CDC says is that at the very minimum, uh, someone initiating PrEP should have a negative blood antibody test within a week before starting PrEP. That can be a finger prick blood antibody test or a lab-based blood antibody test. Um, keep in mind that the window period around the antibody test is relatively large. It's not going to start picking up HIV infection until three to four weeks uh, at the earliest after someone's been infected. So there's still a small chance that using just a blood antibody test will miss someone who has acute infection, which is defined as antibody negative, but virus positive. So what I like to do, especially when someone is about to start PrEP, is to add a test for acute HIV infection. And I think the best test for acute HIV infection is an HIV RNA or viral load test. It's the most sensitive test for acute infection. It can detect an infection that occurred up to about 11 days before the patient presents. Um, so my strong feeling is that everyone who is starting PrEP, particularly if they have a recent history of exposure, get uh, a test for acute infection and ideally an RNA test. There's a, a newer test called the fourth generation test, which combines the best antibody test that we have, plus a test for a viral protein called P24. This is commonly called a fourth generation test. It's more sensitive than the antibody test for acute infection. It's a little less sensitive than the RNA test, but if that's all you have access to, then it's better than nothing. Some uh, people would also say that uh, Any time a patient interrupts PrEP uh, for more than a week, that they get uh, a test for acute HIV infection right before they reinitiate PrEP as well. Uh, and finally, uh, both when you initiate PrEP and if you have to reinitiate PrEP or while someone's on continuous PrEP, it's really important to do a quick symptom inventory to see if the patient has any symptoms of acute HIV infection. Uh, and in that case, I would add a test for acute infection and probably delay starting or refilling their PrEP until I knew that they didn't have acute HIV infection. Okay, so I think what I heard you say is um, at the time of starting PrEP, you think an antibody alone maybe isn't enough, that it would be a good idea to get this, this other test, a viral load, or, or if you don't have that, a fourth gen, is that right? That's pretty much my, my clinical practice. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, I have a question for you. So, <clears throat> I see a lot of people who um, wind up needing PEP or post-exposure prophylaxis mm -hmm. because of an occasional slip-up. Uh, and it turns out that a good number of these people actually have pretty frequent slip-ups. Mm -hmm. and even though they're getting PEP right now, which is you know a month of antiretroviral therapy, they would get more continuous protection if they went on PrEP. I've never been exactly sure how to make that transition from PEP to PrEP, mm -hmm. and I was hoping you could help with that. Yeah, great question. That, that can be a tricky area for people. I think the, the bottom line that I, um, that I like to think about when I think about that question of how do I get someone from PEP to PrEP is that any gap in coverage, any gap in that person um, having that biomedical prevention layer of protection opens them up to getting a risk of getting infected. Mm -hmm. 
So what we saw in some of the, the randomized controlled trials that were done that looked at PrEP was, were that after people stopped PrEP, while they were on PrEP, they had very high levels of protection against HIV, but after they stopped, their um, level of risk went right back up to what it was before they initiated. So achieving a seamless um, transition from PEP to PrEP should be the ideal strategy, meaning that you go directly from your 28-day course of NPEP, whatever it is, um, onto daily Truvada for PrEP. Now, people sometimes get concerned, well, what if the person is HIV infected? What if the PEP didn't work? And I think that is the reason why a lot of providers think, oh, maybe I should wait and test them for HIV and make sure they're truly negative. It kind of comes back to what you were talking about, actually, which is making sure they weren't HIV infected at the time they initiated mm -hmm. their PEP course. Um, so I think it, I like to, just as you described for PrEP, I like to get a test for acute HIV infection at the time of PEP initiation. Mm -hmm. And that way I feel pretty confident when I'm transitioning someone from PEP to PrEP that they don't have um, some sort of early HIV that's being partially suppressed by their PEP regimen. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the case where the person didn't have that done mm -hmm. at the start of PEP? They had an antibody test, it was negative. <clears throat> Let's say they were put on a three-drug PEP regimen, which is common, maybe Truvada and Raltegravir. Um, you know, in that situation, I think the best course of action for the client is still a seamless transition from PEP to PrEP. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is you can get an antibody and viral load test at the point of that transition, and then continue to follow the person with Q3 month HIV antibody testing, just as you would for any other client on PrEP. Mm -hmm. And the, the hope is that if they actually were infected, you would pick that up at a subsequent visit. From everything we've seen so far in the literature, that that is what would happen. Okay, great, thanks.